That was Can't Stop the Stars by British electronic music project Jungle. Now, the band appeared out of nowhere in late 2013 as a mystery group, but their slick funk pop singles quickly propelled them to fame. Their 2014 self-titled debut album was certified gold in the UK, and their following album, Forever, confirmed their success around the world. And this summer, they released their third album. It's called Loving in Stereo, a collection of wall-to-wall -wall bangers bursting with life. And Josh Lloyd Watson, one of the duo behind Jungle, joins me to tell me more about it. Thank you so much for being with us today. Congratulations on the new album. The feel-good factor certainly continues with Loving in Stereo. What inspired this 13-track bundle of love? 13. Um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of come out of a an honest place, a kind of a, a place of um, kind of pure joy and, and, and euphoria and um, creativity. I think that, um, you know, the second album that we made was, was an interesting album. The second album is always difficult, but for us, you know, we kind of got over that. And, and this album is about kind of freedom and, and, and spiritual awakening, ultimately. And you wrote the album before the pandemic, but the overall mood and message of the album feels very current, especially the lead single, Keep Moving, which implores listeners to keep moving in the face of barriers. Would you say that it's become kind of a positive anthem for resilience in these very weird times that we're living in? Yeah, I mean, I think obviously the track was written about personal kind of things. You know, we, we'd come out of relationships and, and we'd come out of difficult, um, difficult times in our own lives. And I think that song was a sort of this rallying call to kind of, you know, pick yourself up and, and get going. And I think that after the pandemic, um, it, it sort of had this sort of social context and um, kind of resonated with people in a way that, you know, you just can't, you can't manufacture that sort of, um, that sort of thing. But yeah, I think it, I think it does um, resonate with people in so a different way now. It's certainly a song I've been listening to a lot recently. Let's take a listen to a, an extract from the song. It's called Keep Moving. Check it out. was Keep Moving by British band Jungle. Now, you've got a very original visual identity in your music videos, often featuring dancers, often the same dancers. Was this intentional? Did you want to have kind of a, a, a jungle music video, just like you have a unique jungle sound? For sure, you know, we sort of roll with whatever happens and um, we kind of let the universe dictate what, what, what it should be rather than fighting against it. And I think it all came from the very first video we made, which was um, this amazing six-year-old breakdancing girl called Be Girl Terror for a song called Platoon. And it, it just seemed so kind of organic at that moment that from there we just kind of, you know, rolled it out across all of our all of our songs. Because I think ultimately dance is the most fundamental way of expressing yourself to music and, you know, as, as creatives and um, directors and producers. That's all we want to do. We want to inspire not only ourselves, but other people. and. Um, when we watch those videos, you know, after we've made them, we're inspired by them. And I, I think that that's one of the most important things is to kind of share that circle of um, positivity and inspiration through through dance. Well, it's definitely inspiring uh, dance moves uh, in those videos. I'm definitely taking some tips from your, from those moves. Now, Loving in Stereo is your third album. It's the first that you've released on your own label, Kayola Records. Did this give you newfound freedom and new waves of, of creativity? I think so for sure. I think it was the first time that we kind of fully accepted, you know, ourselves and uh, who we are within the kind of responsibility of making the music. You know, I think young bands and artists can grow up on labels and, and, and always kind of be seeking to uh, please, you know, a business essentially. Um, and I think that that's not really what makes great music for us. The, the great music is about making music that we love and, and that we, um, that we vibe with, and um, I think this record has that sort of sense of sense of freedom in it that that you can't necessarily get when you're trying to um, kind of make music for for a kind of business in some way. 
And there's a lot of freedom in your performances as well, which are a big part of your project, which goes beyond the, the duo that you form with uh, Tom McFarland. Tell us about the lineup that you've created for the tour that you're kicking off right now. So, yeah, with, with, with the live environment, you know, it's, it's, for us, it's about um, creating a show that has a lot of energy. And, uh, you know, we've always been inspired by, you know, acts like Sly and the Family Stone and um, Earth, Wind and Fire, even Arcade Fire, you know, with, with the amount of energy and the amount of um, people they have on stage, it, it's so infectious. And um, for us, you know, we've got this seven strong band um, with some of our closest friends and, and they're such incredible musicians. They just bring the songs alive for us in, in that live environment create this energy that's so contagious. Contagious energy, I think that's a, a, a re really good summary for what your shows are like. Your tunes are as much for what's going on in your head as, as for your body. You mentioned the importance of dance. Your concerts often turn into these huge dance parties. Fortunately, concerts have kind of been put on hold for quite a while due to the coronavirus pandemic. What have you missed the most about being on tour? I think it's just this sort of um, this sort of family, this camaraderie that's that, that comes with you know touring with some of your friends and, and the people. Everybody in our in our band and crew are such beautiful people, and um, it, it, there's just this real real sense of kind of togetherness um, in it. And, and then when the when the crowds come in, they kind of join in with that, and, and we just kind of celebrate. And, and it's such a beautiful place for us, and uh, it's full of so much kind of electric energy that, that it's, it's it's almost addictive. Addictive energy. Well, if you're lucky enough to be here in Paris, you'll be able to see Jungle at the Zenith uh, in January. I am definitely going to be on the dance floor rocking out to your tunes. We're going to move on to some other music news making headlines right now. The American indie musicians Sofian Stevens and Angelo de Augustine have teamed up on an intimate album called A Beginner's Mind. The pair worked on the project in a cabin in upstate New York, and in that cabin they watched movies every day, which loosely inspired the record. For instance, this track is called Back to Oz, and they wrote it after watching, of course, Return to Oz. Take a listen. That was Back to Oz by Sofian Stevens and Angelo de Augustine, who found inspiration watching films. Uh, Josh, coming back to you, do you have any sort of go-to source of inspiration, like films or books, when you're creating your songs? Yeah, I think so. I think films are always a good place to start with, um, you know, because they transport you. I think art as well is, is very good for that. They, they sort of transport you to another place, and, and, and music is always the, the kind of most principal connective form of um you know getting emotion to to the people and i think that um if you can be inspired by you know movies or art then i think that's an amazing thing and that soft gen seasons um track sounds amazing it's an awesome uh, album definitely recommend checking it out as i do the next project uh, that we're going to talk to you about this is the american double bassist and singer Esperanza Spalding. She's released a powerful new album. It's called Songwrites Apothecary Lab. It features 12 songs created and recorded in her traveling laboratory over the past several months. She wrote the album in collaboration with specialists in neuroscience, music therapy, psychology, and ethnomusicology. And each song was designed to have an intended effect on the listener. For instance, check out this track. It's called Formuela 10. It's about grieving the consequences of one's own romantic entitlement tendencies. Take a listen. I met an angel on earth, but he didn't know it. And I see the road of my curse that led me through it away. With all this love in my heart, I couldn't show it. Touching the sting of my shame, no need to grow it now. Maybe I'll find one again someday when I learn to love. And finally, the somewhat controversial Quebecois glam rocker Hubert Lenoir has released a vulnerable sophomore album. It's called Ictura de Ipse, Music Direct, which he calls an ode to music in general. And we're going to leave you with a track from that album. It's called Secret. 
But before we go, I want to thank my guest today, Josh Lloyd Watson. Thank you so much for being with us uh, from the band Jungle, of course. Be sure to check out their latest album. It's called Loving in Stereo. It is exactly what it says on the box, pure positivity and fun. I've been listening to it on repeat. Couldn't recommend it more. For more arts and culture news, head to our website and stay in touch on social media. And please stay tuned to France 24. More news is coming up right after this. Shit.